welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Every man was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth, said Miguel de Cervantes. To which it may be added that even if all of us were, most of the spoons would soon wind up in the hands or the mouths of a very small select group. Which gives rise to the observation, it's not how you begin, but how you end. This is a proposition that is so universally self-evident. Why does it have to be repeated over and over again? Our mystery drama, Olive Darling and Morton Deer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. those people you never see. Oh, they take up space. They have shape and form. But somehow, they simply don't register. They serve you in restaurants. They wait on you behind counters. They perform the thousand and one tasks required by our society. But an hour or even five minutes after you've spoken to them, you'd be hard put to describe them. I suppose they're just part of the background of life. And one of these people is Morton Miller. Of course, his wife notices him. Morton, dear, I'm home. Oh, yes. Hello, Olive, darling. Uh, I have dinner all ready for us. Oh, Morton, dear, you shouldn't have. Well, I didn't want you to have to fuss after a long, hard day at the office. Aren't you going to tell me? Uh, uh tell you what? What the doctor said. Oh, uh, what the doctor said. Uh, he said I would have to leave my job. Oh. Well, we were half expecting that. Yes, but uh, but to hear it as a verdict, <laughs> that's what he said. I, I could no longer spend my days cooped up in an office hunched over a desk. Oh. And so I said, uh, if you have to audit books and accounts and so forth, you have to sit hunched up over a desk. I asked him what I was supposed to do. <laughs> uh, uh, starved to death? Oh, Morton, dear. Uh, no, he said. Um, I would just have to change my lifestyle. And so you shall, Morton, dear. And so you shall. Uh, 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 do you know what else he said, Olive, darling? Mm-hmm. Uh, he said I would have to spend more time outdoors. Oh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not equipped for any outdoor work uh, that I know of. But there will have to be a change in your lifestyle. Then perhaps it'll be one that's very much in keeping with the times. Oh, 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 what do you mean? Well, these days, it's it's not unusual any longer for the wife to work while the husband takes care of the home. Well, then, is there any reason why I shouldn't work while you run the house? Oh, yes. Well, what is it? Oh, uh, you don't make enough money. Oh, we'll get by. Well, now, what else did the doctor say? Uh, he, he said I had to get away. Oh? Uh, to the mountains. I simply have to start breathing pure air to get my lungs clean. Oh, well, when, when did he say you had to go? Of the sooner the better. And to stay for at least a month. A month? Oh, I, I can't take that much time off. Oh, I certainly have no intention of going anywhere alone. Well, if Dr. Marcus said you have to go, that's all there is to it. But, Olive, darling... Please listen, Morton, dear. Your health is more important than anything else. To leave you uh, uh, for a month? If it has to be. Do you realize we've been married 20 years, Olive Darling, and we've never spent a day apart from each other? Yes, Morton, dear. But there will have to be some changes. Uh, I can get plenty of fresh air in the park. No. No, if the doctor says you need a month of the mountains, then that's where you're going. Oh, oh, where did Dr. Marcus suggest that you go? The further away you get from civilization, the cleaner the air, and uh, also the the cheaper the accommodations. Oh, Morton, dear, you're not to worry about money. But, Olive, darling, I, I know how money works. It's my business. I know we have very little. Um, I was hoping to go up to some town, or, 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 or better, some small village, and uh, uh, get a job. A job? Well, maybe I could do somebody's books. 
or or something. But you'll be working in an office again. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I, I'd sit under a tree on a mountaintop. You're not going away to work, but to rest. Now, promise me you won't worry about money. Promise. All right. I, I won't worry about money. Oh, good. Now, now, we'll spend the night packing, and you're going to get into the car and leave tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, Olive, darling. Tomorrow morning, Morton, dear. Hello? Olive, darling. Oh, Morton, dear. How are you? I'm fine. Where are you? Uh, I'm either in, uh, Colorado or Wyoming. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, have you found a place to stay? Uh, no. I better go on a bit further. Where? Well, a fellow was telling me about a little village called Council Forks, uh, about 50 miles further up in the mountains. Uh, sounds first rate. I'll, I'll try to get there before dark. Please, be careful. Oh, 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 I will. I, is everything all right? Of course. Well, I'd better start driving. We may be in for some rain. Mm. Uh, uh, I'll call you later. Uh, uh, goodbye, Olive, darling. Goodbye, Martin, dear. Uh, uh, is, is, is something the matter, Sheriff? May I see your license and registration, please? Oh, certainly. Uh, I wasn't speeding that I know of. Just hand them over. Uh, 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 but what's wrong? Let's see. Uh, this one's name is Morton Miller. He's from Terre Haute, Indiana. Bobby, see if his license plates read 67892, like it says here. Joe, check it against the stolen sheet. Well, now, Mr. Miller... What you doing out here in the middle of no place in this absolutely hellacious rainstorm? I, uh, I, uh, I'm bound for a town called, um, uh, somebody said it was called, uh, uh, Council Forks. Is that a fact? Why would anybody want to go to Council Forks? I, I was told the air up there is very good. Is that true? Well, Mr. Miller, be advised you're very well covered from four sides. Uh... Uh, uh, covered. Now, nah, you please step out of the car. But, but it's raining. Well, you got my good powers of observation, Mr. Miller. I have to say that for you. Now, face the car. Uh, Lean your hands against it. But, uh, oh. All right, he's clean. Check out the inside and the back seat, Bobby. But, but, but what are you looking for? Any other key to your trunk, sir? I wish you would tell me what... What, what you what got I... in the trunk there? Uh, uh, just some clothes and some uh, uh, camping equipment. What for? I told you I'm coming up here for the air. It's, it's doctor's orders. Oh, yeah, Bobby. That does look like a bunch of camping stuff. Never mind messing it up. Okay, sir, you can get back in your car. Oh, uh, thank you, Sheriff. Uh, uh, do you mind telling me what this is all about? A fellow robbed a payroll... Oh? Got away with over a hundred thousand. You got reason to believe he's headed this way. Now be careful. He's armed with a big forty-five caliber pistol. And he looks like he knows how to use it. Oh, my goodness. I I hope no one was killed. There's going to be a pretty big reward out for this fellow. A uh, reward? Yeah. But unless you can handle a gun, don't get any big ideas. Oh, oh, me? No, 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 no. I would never... Now, if you want to get to Council Forks, remember to take the second left. If you miss it, you might just wander around lost in these mountains for the next 40 years. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the next left. No, no! The second left. Oh, 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 yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh, 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 I said, oh, raise oh, your oh, hands. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Now, what do you want? Uh, I I really want to put my hands down. 
uh, 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 because the rain's running down in, into my sleeves. I got you covered from the window. There's a big 45 aimed at your heart. Uh, no, no. The listen, door please. is unlocked. Move forward, turn the knob. Do everything slowly. That's it. Open the door. Step inside. Don't do anything quickly or abruptly. That's fine. Now close the door. Uh, look. Step inside. Uh, look, all I want to do is uh, uh, take off your hat, drop it on the floor. Uh, please, if, and if, 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 if take off if your you raincoat. Oh, I'd really like to do that. It's uh, sopping wet. I do it slowly, just like everything else. Now, what are you supposed to be doing here? Uh, uh, doing, uh, uh, doing, uh, 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 me? I, oh, oh, I, I just came up for a rest. A rest, huh? Uh, uh, excuse me, how, how, how long are you going to point that gun at me? That depends. Oh, uh, on, uh, what? On things. I see. Uh, any, uh, 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 particular kind of things? I'm a writer. Huh, a, uh, a uh, writer. Books, novels. Really? Uh, uh, what's your name? Smith. Smith. Elton P. Smith. Hmm. I, I never heard of you. That's because it's not my name. But you just said... It is my name, my real name, but it's not the name I write under. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, oh, 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 what, what name do you write under? Is that important? Well, I... I have a lot of trouble finding privacy. Understand? Well, yes. If anyone knew I was up here, why the place would be jam-packed with newspaper men, TV crews. Mm hmm hmm I... Uh, I wish you'd stop pointing that gun Now, they'd get in my hair. I wouldn't be able to write as much as one single solitary word. Oh, sure, sure. Now, what did you say you were headed toward Council Forks? Yes, toward Council Forks. What were you planning to do then? I uh, thought I'd look for a job. A job? Uh, 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 just for a couple of weeks. A job doing what? Oh, almost anything. What's your line of work? I'm a cost analyst. Offhand, I wouldn't think there's much call for that in Council Forks. Well, I, uh, I, I, I also know how to cook. Cook? Yes. I, 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 I'm a splendid amateur chef. You know something? I'm starved. Oh? Some old lady was supposed to come up and keep house, but she never showed up. Now, how'd you like to stay here and cook? Uh, oh, oh, I don't... I got I a don't. whole bunch of stuff in the freezer, but I don't know how to boil water, and I'm starving to death. Oh, uh, yes, but, but, uh, but you see, I'm, I'm really not interested in cooking. Um, uh, so maybe if I could get my car started... You're I... not going anywhere. Oh, uh, oh, what did you say? I said, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> yourself in poor Morton Miller's position. He's looking into the barrel of a 45 caliber pistol. You can look at the muzzle of that gun and see your whole life dance by in review. But when the man who is holding that pistol calmly announces that you're not going anywhere, you know something? He's right. I'll be back with Act Two shortly. that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. The gentleman who made that remark should be forgiven. He was, after all, a poet. The hero of our story, Mr. Morton Miller, is right now looking at a hand which is not rocking a cradle. It is holding a 45 caliber pistol. And that hand, while it may not rule the world, is certainly going to rule Mr. Morton Miller. Uh, 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 what do you mean I'm not uh, going anywhere? You're not. Uh, you mean you're going to use that gun uh, uh, to keep me here? <laughs> the rain's going to keep you here. The storm. Even if we're to stop this minute and clear up, the roads are all washed out. Oh, you'll be here for a while. Uh, look, I... Uh... 
I would like. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Well, my wife is 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 sure to be worried. I, I'd like to call her. Your wife? Uh, yes. I don't have a phone. I wouldn't want one. You wouldn't? I'd never get any of my work done. You know how people are, always pestering writers, talking about work. How about making us some dinner? Mmm. All right. This isn't too bad. As a matter of fact, I, I can remember eating worse. <laughs> no. Well, I, uh... I just, uh, uh, threw some things together. <laughs> well, looks like you got yourself a job. I'll tell you something. You don't look like a chef. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a chef. You I, know what uh, you look like? Um, uh, no. You look like a cop. Uh, a, a cop? A federal cop. I, I do? You know why? Because you don't look like anybody. Federal cops, as a rule, have the kind of faces you just don't seem to be able to remember. Oh, uh, believe me, I'm not a police officer, I, I, I assure you. <laughs> Why should you want to assure me? Uh, uh, no, no reason. I believe I'll try another rare slice of that roast. Mm. Oh, by all means. Uh, 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 let me have the knife. It's very sharp. Oh, uh, certainly. Uh, here. Slice you a piece? Uh, no, I'm not hungry. Hmm. Let's listen to the news, hmm? Uh, the news? No, it's just about 8 o'clock. Radio's right in back of you. Turn it on, huh? Oh, uh, uh, surely. Daring and dangerous bandit who escaped with well over $100,000 of the tip-top Tolliver Company payroll is believed headed this way. The Alvarado Mountain area is a fantastic place to hide out from the law. These woods and hills abound in natural hiding. Sheriff Armand Pendleton asks all citizens to report any suspicious-looking person. It is reported that ladies' skirts will be somewhat shorter this year. You care? Uh, 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 do I care about According what? to news if from skirts New York, are going to be shorter this year? Oh, uh, uh, no, we'll turn it on. So, there's a bank robber running around loose, huh? Uh, is there? Oh, just on the news, didn't you hear Oh, um, uh, oh, oh, well, I, I wasn't really listening. You mean you didn't hear what the announcer said? Uh, I only listened to that kind of story with, uh, uh, half an ear. Half an ear. That's very interesting. Uh, well, there's, there's so much of it. I, uh, I mean, uh, violence of, of one kind or another. Is that so? And uh, this fellow who robbed the Tip Top Tolliver Corporation, uh, uh, he didn't kill anybody. No, he didn't. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to turn in. Oh, uh, look, maybe I might be able to get my car started after all. Well, you forget you've taken a job here. I have? Why, certainly. You're my cook. I beg your pardon, chef. Well, um... Look at how nice and easy it is, huh? Just to cook for the two of us. But I was uh, thinking... That... Your room's at the top of the stairs. Very nice, large, airy room. Private bath. But I really should... I'm doing this for your good, you know. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. But hey, you're welcome. Thank... Now, let's not say any more about it. Mm-hmm. That smells delicious. Oh, it's just bacon and eggs. Just bacon and eggs. <laughs> well, when they're prepared by a master chef. Oh, but I'm not a... I'm not look a... at you. Look at you. Your clothes are wet. Well, they, uh, uh, they're still wet from last night. Uh-uh. That's more recently. How'd that happen? I, um... You, uh, were thinking of leaving. I guess the rain was too much for you, huh? No, I just went to my car to, uh, uh, to get some dry clothes. Is that what you did? Yes. Then why didn't you put them on? Uh, I, uh, thought I'd make breakfast first. <laughs> Here's a man who's not only an expert at his job, he's also devoted to his duty. <laughs> why don't you, uh, switch on the radio? We can hear the news. 
There is still no word on the man who robbed the tip-top Tolliver Corporation, except that police are positive he is headed for the Alvarado Mountains. As a matter of fact, he may very well be there now. The bandit is polite and well-spoken. And that's really all we know about him, except that he stole $109,000. Timothy Tolliver, Jr., president of the corporation, has announced a $10,000 reward for the apprehension of the criminal, dead or alive. On a less gruesome note... Lieutenant, uh, what do you think of that? A $10,000 reward? Uh, uh, for whom? For the fellow who robbed the tip-top Tolliver Corporation. Oh. A man could be tempted. Uh, tempted uh, to do what? Turn this fellow in. Oh. Well, uh, first he would have to find the robber, uh, wouldn't he? <laughs> yes, I suppose he would. I, I wouldn't want that kind of money. You mean you don't need $10,000? Well, maybe I do need it, but I certainly don't want it. I don't approve of that... Uh, uh, kind of thing. What kind of thing? Uh, you know, being, um, I suppose you would call it, uh, 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 being an informer. I see. Now, uh, you take that robber. They say he's headed for the Alvarado Mountains, and, uh, uh, uh that makes sense. Yes. He, he could have found himself somebody's old summer house. Uh, nobody comes here till after the spring rains. So he has at least uh, six weeks or a month to uh, lay, uh, 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 that is, uh, to lie uh, low. Go on. And uh, even if someone happens along, he can say that he's a writer who needs privacy. Uh, except... Except what? Uh, except I uh, don't see any typewriter. You don't? No. Well, not all writers use them, you know. Oh. Me, I like to write with a pen, a long yellow pen. Oh, I I didn't know that. Um, but uh, uh, about that robber. Yes? Uh, well, I want to say uh, he wouldn't have anything to fear from me. He wouldn't? Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, all I know is that I was lost in these mountains. I was sopping wet. I was tired and cold and hungry. And I'm not supposed to let things get that way because my health I isn't too good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. And this uh, 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 person, he invited me in. Uh, well, well, now, no, hold it, hold it. Uh, you mean to imply that I'm the... Oh, no, 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 Mr. Smith. I, I, absolutely not. All right, then what are you saying? I, I, I'm, I'm saying if you were the robber... Uh, 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 if, uh, uh, that, that tiny little two-letter word, uh, if, uh, it, it, it covers a wide territory. Well, don't uh, push it too far. Uh, 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 if you were the robber, it, it would mean nothing to me. Is that so? Uh, uh, absolutely so. Uh, uh, to me, you are the kind human being who gave me shelter from the storm, food and drink, and even a job. Uh, uh, no, sir, you, you could trust me. Yeah. Supposing I were the robber, why should I do that? Uh, why? Why? That's another important little word, just like uh, if. I have, you see, this forty-five caliber pistol here. I, 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 uh, I, I, I see it. Why shouldn't I put a slug through you? Uh, 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 because. Because why? You better think fast. If. I'm with this robber. I'd realize there's a reward on my head. Why take chances? One bullet, and it's over. And I could toss your body out over the cliff where it wouldn't be found, oh, in a hundred years. If I were the robber, why shouldn't I do that? Uh, because that's not the kind of man you are. How do you know what kind of man I am? Well, uh, maybe you're a robber, uh, but you're not a murderer. I know human nature. Uh, I, I know you wouldn't shoot a man in cold blood. Is that a fact? Yes, it, it, it is, and I'll bet my life on it. Say, is there any more of that uh, great bacon and those pancakes? Oh, oh, sure. Oh, all you want. What's for dinner? 
uh, 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 some boeuf bourguignon. Boeuf bourguignon? That sounds terrific. You know something? If I were this robber, I don't think I would shoot you. I, I, I know that. Not for a while, anyway. You cook the best food I ever ate in my life. Uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Smith. Good morning. You're up early? I don't sleep much. Hard at all. I see. What do you see? Oh, 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 it's just a figure of speech. Actually, I, I, I don't see it all. It, 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 it's, it's just uh, that we say things uh, 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 to pass the time. Ah, uh huh. I was uh, thinking of taking a drive into town. Oh, were you? Is there any reason why I shouldn't? Oh, no, 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 not at all. I, I want to call my wife. And there's a special herb that grows around this part of the country, and I thought I'd pick it up in one of the stores. Oh, really? Oh, you should see what it does to the taste of meat. Well, then, by all means, we should have some. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, would you want to drive into town with me? Ah, uh, no. I've got a deadline on a book, and I must spend the day writing. Uh-huh. I- is there anything you want me to pick up for you? No, thanks. I can't think of a thing. Okay, then uh, I'd better get into the car. Have a nice trip. Well, thank you. Is there something wrong? I don't know. I I, I, I can't seem to make anything happen. What do you mean? Well, I turn the key and the starter doesn't... It, it, it's, it's dead. Try it again. Oh, well, that's just what I'm doing. Well, that's odd. Let me open the hood and take a look. I, I I have a brand new battery and and I just had a tune up. What what uh, what? what uh, I found the problem. Oh, what is it? Here, take a look. At what? You see the top of the old distributor cap? It looks like a hairline fracture. Oh, uh, what does that mean? It means you can't get any current. Well, it was perfectly all right when I got here. Of course, had to be. I see. That that crack. How, how, how did that happen? Sometimes it just breaks under the shock of very high voltage. You know the force that's required to start that engine? Hmm. Uh, could, it, uh, uh, could it have been broken? Been broken? How? Well, someone could have given it a sharp blow with a hammer or, 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 or something. That's, that's possible, isn't it? Now, why would anyone want to do a thing like that? Why? You tell us. A very subtle gentleman, this Mr. Elton P. Smith, or whatever his name is. So far, everything has been smooth, calm, and polite. A conference with our automobile mechanic yields the information that distributor caps can crack of their own accord. On the other hand... Somewhere on those premises, there just might be over a hundred thousand dollars, plus a ten thousand dollars reward. I'll return shortly with the third act. tend to think of payroll robbers as cutthroat bandits and murderous desperados. I'm sure many, if not the majority of them are. However, sometimes you come across a crook who's just like anybody else. He really doesn't like to kill people, and all in all, he may be a very reasonable person. This doesn't excuse him. It just adds to the infinite variety of the human race. Two members of the human race are discussing matters high on a Colorado mountaintop. I'm sorry, she's cracked on you. Uh, how, how, how could a thing like that happen? You notice how I just referred to your distributor cap as a she? All of a sudden. Why do we do that? Refer to pieces of machinery as she? She, how can you fix a thing like that? You suppose it has anything to do with sex? Maybe I could take a walk. A walk? Uh... Uh, maybe, maybe I could find some of those herbs I was telling you about. Uh, uh, they grow wild here, I believe. Well, I don't know if I should let you risk it. Uh, what, what am I risking? Your neck, for one thing. 
Oh, sure. It's rough country. Very steep. You could fall and break an ankle. Another thing, this is Copperhead country. Uh, Copperhead? Oh, yeah. Place just teems with them. They're more deadly than rattlers, you know. Oh. I don't mean the poison's more deadly. It's about the same. But at least a rattler might warn you. A copperhead won't. No, sir. The fact is you never see a copperhead. He just lies there, blends in with the ground. You pass by and zip. That's it. You bought it. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm sure I'd be extra careful. I'm only saying this all for your own good, you know. Hmm. Uh, 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 let's suppose that you were that payroll bandit. Uh, uh, there are two reasons why I would never turn you in. Tell me about them. Uh, first, I'm not an informer. Uh, I, I think you have to be born with a little streak of that in you. What's the second reason? Uh, it has to do with the Tip Top Tolliver Corporation. The place you... Uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, I mean, uh, the place the robber held up. What about the Tip Top Tolliver Corporation? Well, I personally have no use for Timothy Tolliver Jr. Oh, really? Is he a friend of yours? Oh, no. He's he's a millionaire. How, how would I get to know him? Well, then what have you got against him? Everybody knows his ethics are questionable. Are they? <laughs> he's pulled off some very shady deals. He's taken advantage of people who trusted him. Um, so, you see, I can't feel badly about his being robbed. You still shouldn't venture too far. It is dangerous, you know. Oh, I'll be very careful. I just want to find some of those herbs. Hmm, let's see, the main road should be... If I keep on walking in, in this direction, maybe I... Maybe I can come across it. Um, what? Oh, what's that? What's there, Bolivar? Down, Bolivar. Down. Who are you? What you doing here? Oh, uh, hi. I, 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 I already told you what I was doing here. You did? When was this? Uh, uh last week. Uh... Uh, you stopped my car, Sheriff. Don't, don't you remember? It was a rainstorm. And you asked me where I was headed, and I said at Council Forks. Oh, yeah. I don't remember your face, but I do recall a conversation. Right. Uh, uh, you were looking for a payroll bandit. We still are. Uh, what makes you think he's around here? Part of that money. Not much. Maybe about a thousand dollars worth was in fifty dollar bills. Oh. And they were marked. We've been following a trail of them $50 bills. They lead us right smack into the Alvarado Hills. Why are you so nervous? Uh, uh, I, 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 I understand there are a great many copperheads, uh, 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 copperheads around here. I, uh, I am probably standing on one right now. <laughs> now, a week ago, you told me you was headed for Council Forks? Uh, yes, sir, I did. Just a matter of routine form, I checked around Council Forks. Nobody reported seeing you or an out-of-state car either. Oh, well, I I never did get there. Yeah, I can see that. I took the wrong turn. Uh, uh, you know me. No, I don't know you. Could you be the bandit? Me? Oh, no. Uh, uh, don't Don't you know what a bandit looks like? They come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Uh, uh, let me give you my driver's license. It has my picture on it, so you know it's mine. Okay? Uh, check it. Uh, you'll find I've been a cost analyst for London and Spears till just about a month ago. Uh, uh, call my doctor, Dr. Benjamin Marcus. He'll tell you he sent me up here for my health. Well, never mind all that. Just tell me why you're so nervous. Uh, but I'm not. I've been a sheriff 40 years. I know the signs. A week ago, you said you was headed for Council Forks. Never got there. I told you I got lost. But where have you been spending your time? Um, where? You look well-fed, well-rested. You shaved this morning. 
Oh, I always shave. Every morning. Where did you shave? I, uh, I've been camping. Camping? Uh, you saw that equipment in the back of my car. Where's your camp? I'd like to take a look at it. I, uh, uh, I, you know something? I have no sense of direction. I think I'm lost. Where is the fellow that robbed the payroll? Hmm? Now, let's get down to facts. You ran into this guy. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but I know. Tenderfoot like you trying to let on that you could camp by yourself in this wilderness. You had to stay with somebody. Admit it. Now, look. They know what is supposed to be living in a 20-mile radius of this place at this time. So you ran into this fella, and you're staying with him. I... I... He don't let on who he is, and it never occurs to you because you ain't trained to spot these outlaw types. Admit it. I... I admit it. Now, where is he? Uh, where's who? The fella you're staying with. You have to tell us because if you don't, you become an accessory. You're asking me to become an informer. I'm asking you to do your duty as a law-abiding citizen. No. No? This man shared his home with me, uh, his food and his trust. And I promised him. You promised him? I want to forget you said that. That gets you right into jail. Uh, I gave him my word. It was illegal. Uh, There's a reward. uh, Blood money. I, I won't take it. You don't have to. But there's one thing you have to do. Lead us to where this man is hiding. I don't know if, uh... I don't, I don't know if I can. Now, just remember. It's your law. It's your country. It's your job to protect it. Yes, I, but I still can't... How'd you like to sit in jail for a while? I can arrest you on suspicion. You're right. Uh, reason, justice, um, uh, everything's on your side. Where is he staying? The name on the door says uh, Maltby. Maltby? The old Maltby house. Now, I, I don't want a reward. When you go after him, just make sure you bring a new distributor cap for my car. That's all you want? That's all I want. Uh, I I don't want to have to face him. You have to. If he puts up a fight, somebody might get killed. You go back and kind of distract his attention. But but but, uh, uh, but of course we could all be mistaken. Uh, uh, he might not be the man. Now you don't really believe that, do you? Now make sure you keep him busy. Get him into an argument or a game of chess or a game of cards. Can I depend on you? Yes. You can depend on me. Mm. This is fantastic. I never tasted anything this good. You must have found those herbs, eh? Yes. Yes, I did. What's the matter? You look under the weather. Is there anything wrong? Uh, No. I just have to have another helping. Say, uh, that isn't fattening, is it? Oh, I don't think so. Freeze! Oh, no. Say, what's the idea? You're under arrest. What for? Just shut up while I read you your right. No, 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 look here. I'm a writer from New York. Mr. Maltby let me use his house. You can call him and ask him. Mr. Maltby is mountain climbing in Switzerland someplace. He won't be back for six months. See what's in that packet, Bobby. Is there more in that drawer? Well, <laughs> look at these. Now, now wait, wait, wait. I, I, I never saw that before in my life. Fifty dollar bills. If I compare the serial numbers against the stolen ones, will they be the same? Now look, Sheriff, I am... Tell a... it to the judge, Mr. Smith. Uh, I'm... I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I'm sorry. Olive, darling. Oh, 
Morton, dear. I was so lonesome without you. Oh, I thought the month would never go by. It seemed like a year. You know, something very amusing took place up near where you were. Did you hear about it? Uh, uh hear about what? Well, there was this payroll holdup at some company with a, a funny-sounding name. Oh, oh, uh, Tip Top Tolliver. Uh, I, I may have read about it. Yes, yes. Uh, well, what happened? Well... You see, they thought the bandit was hiding out around the Alvarado Mountains. They tracked him down. And they arrested him because they found some of the stolen money on him. But he was the wrong man. He was? Yes. It seems he was able to prove that he was a writer from New York. A writer? That, uh, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> yes. You know, the real bandit had come to the house and stayed there hiding out until he saw the sheriff approach. Then he just... Frame this poor Mr. Smith. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, did the real thief get away? Of course. And with most of the money. D don't they know what he looks like? Well, they can't seem to agree on a description. It seems the fellow was one of those, you know, nondescript-looking people. Nothing about him you could remember. <laughs> people tell me I, I look like that. Oh, no, Morton, dear. Why, you're so handsome and distinguished... Who could ever forget a face like yours? Well, um, uh, I've been going over our assets, and, uh, Olive Darling, hmm? we may have quite enough when we retire, after all. Oh, I have all the confidence in the world in you, Morton, dear. Thank you, Olive, uh, uh, darling. Chalk one up for the plain people of this world. Not that we necessarily approve of Morton Deer's methods. I'm sure there are those of you who feel that he did not receive his just desserts. But of course, in the banquet of life, so many of us don't receive a full portion of our soup, appetizer, and main course either. I shall return shortly. of the clerk, the waiter, the cab driver, a thin elderly gentleman sitting across the aisle on the bus, that middle-aged lady with mousy colored hair and glasses. How many of these faces can you remember even ten minutes after you encountered them? How many do you even see? How can you hope to sense the drama that may be seething inside one of them? Some of them. All of them. Or... Perhaps none of them. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Ralph Bell, Bryna Rayburn, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. to build a pipeline to carry natural gas from Alaska across Canada to the lower 48 states. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The agreement came Friday night in Ottawa, where Energy Secretary James Schlesinger was negotiating with Canadian House leader Alan McEachin. The pipeline would cost about $10 billion, but Schlesinger says it will eventually save money for both countries. Now, let me underscore that an overland route has major advantages for both countries, that uh, the advantages increase the benefits to the two countries, and that the process of negotiation through which we've gone, through improvements in various respects, 
uh, could result and would result if this proposal were to go forward in lower cost of service for both countries. Schlesinger says some details have to be worked out, but it's possible President Carter and Prime Minister Trudeau will be ready to discuss the pipeline when they meet in Washington next week for the signing of the new Panama Canal Treaty. More news in a moment. CBS was born in 1927, and what a family of talent it brought to life. We invite you to a three-hour gala, CBS Radio at 50, an autobiography and sound, with CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite as anchorman. You'll hear from or about the great comics like Jack Benny and Burns and Allen, Orson Welles of Martian fame, Benny Goodman, sports with Ted Husing, and much, much more. Don't miss CBS Radio at 50, Sunday, September 18th on the CBS Radio Network. Network. The American Bankers Association says Budget Director Bert Lance's history of overdrawn checking accounts cannot be considered normal banking practice. The Bankers Group expressed fear the controversy would damage the image of bankers. There's word from the Far East that an Indonesian banker who was reportedly interested in purchasing Lance Bank stock is backing out. Mike Chinoy reports from Hong Kong. Speaking from his office in Jakarta, Indonesia, Mokhtar Riyadi told CBS News he may end up not buying Bert Lance's 200,000 shares of Georgia Bank stock. The 49-year-old Indonesian banker confirmed that he has just returned from a trip to the U.S., but he said that trip was only to explore the possibility of purchasing the shares from Lance, whom Riyadi said he did not know personally. Riyadi said he was told the shares were available by former Treasury Secretary Robert Anderson, with whom he met while in the U.S. He said, however, that negotiations were still in an initial stage, and last week, when he returned to Indonesia, the deal was still far from complete. Riyadi claimed he had been unaware of the controversy surrounding the Lance case until he arrived in the U.S., and said he had been highly embarrassed by the publicity he has received because of his role in the affair. He said for the time being, he plans to stay in Jakarta and has not yet decided whether to go ahead and buy the 200,000 shares. Mike Chinoy for CBS News, Hong Kong. The New York Times reports that the Carter administration is weighing the possibility of giving the Concord supersonic airliner landing rights at 10 American cities, in addition to New York and Washington. Controversy over noise has held up the Concorde from landing in New York. It does use Dulles Airport in Washington. Police sources in Karachi, Pakistan, say former Prime Minister Ali Bhutto has been arrested at his home. No reason for the arrest has been given. Bhutto was ousted from power in July during a bloodless coup. The army now rules Pakistan. The Department of Health, Education, and Welfare in its annual back-to-school forecast says total enrollment in the nation's schools and colleges this year will drop slightly to 60.3 million students. But HEW says total school costs will rise by $12 billion, the increase attributed to higher costs and salaries. Three Japanese electronic manufacturers say they've developed a new type of record player, one that uses a laser beam instead of a needle to reproduce sound. The player works by casting a laser beam on a special disc coated with a reflecting chemical. It is said to result in excellent sound fidelity and is completely noise-free because there's no friction between disc and needle. This is Doug Poling, CBS News.